Hey friends, Pastor Kevin here with the First Church of God, Cushing, Oklahoma. Thank you so much for joining us today. <clears throat> and today is a good day to have a great day. So thankful that you could join me. Um, I was thinking about this passage of scripture I want to share with you today. But before I do that, I want to. I also was reminded of something that I've heard year after year after year. And I think it's a great piece of history that uh, we might want to even think about using again in our daily life. Back in 1969, one of the top comedians of the world, of the country, was a guy by the name of Red Skelton. That is his actual name, Red Skelton. And uh, he was clean. He was hilarious. And uh, you can find his stuff on DVD and YouTube and other places. Uh, it's well worth your time to watch. But back in 1969, this great comedian, actor, countryman, uh, patriot said these words. And it was called, What the Pledge Means to Me. And he said, I remember one teacher to me. He was the greatest teacher, a real stage of my time. He had such wisdom. We were all reciting the Pledge of Allegiance one day, and he walked over. His name was Mr. Uh, Laswell. He said, I've been listening to you boys and girls recite the Pledge of Allegiance all semester, and it seems as though it has become monotonous to you. If I may, may I recite it to you? explaining to you what it means and uh, what each word means. And then he went on to say, I, me, an individual, a committee of one, pledge, dedicate all of my worldly goods to give without self-pity, allegiance, my love, my devotion to the flag, our standard, old glory, a symbol of freedom. Wherever she waves, there is respect because of loyalty, uh, because your loyalty has, been gi has given her dignity that shouts freedom in everybody's job. Of the united, that means that we all, we, that we have all come together, states, individual communities that have united into 48 great states, 48 individual communities with pride and dignity and purpose, all divided with imaginary boundaries, yet united to a common purpose. And th that's for love for country of America and to the Republic a state in which sovereign power is vested in representatives chosen by the people to govern and government is the people and it's from the people to the leaders, not the leaders to the people. For which it stands, one nation, one nation, uh, for which it stands, one nation, meaning so blessed by God, indivisible, incapable of being divided with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power to live one's own life without threats, fear, or some sort of retaliation and justice, the principle or the quality of leading, of, of dearly, uh, fairly, dealing fairly with others for all, which means boys and girls, it's as much your country as it is mine. Red Skelton went on to say, since I was a small boy, two states have been added to our country with, and two words have been added to our pledge under God. Wouldn't it be a pity, he said, if someone said that that's a prayer and that, would eliminate, that it would be eliminated from school too. I think his words are very powerful. And I also believe we need to take them to heart. I, I share this with you today because if we were to take the time and to break down what God's word says... In a very similar way, what would it mean to us? How would it speak to us in a different way? There was a passage of scripture I was looking at just the other day, and it began to speak to me in this way. So look with me at Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. It says, since God chose you to be holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Did you see that? Since God chose you. Man, if you don't hear anything else today, listen to those words. Since God chose you and me and everybody else. He has chosen us. We were elected. It's more than just, I want you. It's, 
I have a purpose in choosing you. There is a plan in choosing you. We are God's masterpieces created in Christ Jesus that for, to do good works that God has prepared for us in advance, ahead of our time. He has prepared this. Those words excite me to think that God chose me. I am chosen by God. I was not last pick. I was chosen. Ephesians chapter 1, it says that before the creation of the world, he chose chose you. Wow. Before anybody ever thought of me, I was chosen. My wife and I have three children, two children by natural birth and one by adoption. And if you ask our son about it, he would say, yeah, mom and dad, uh, they I've got two sisters and mom and dad are stuck with them, but they chose me. And that's what adoption is. And when you think about what the word of God says in John chapter one, that he chose to adopt us in Ephesians chapter one, he chose to adopt us. The adoption papers were drawn up and he signed his name in blood because he has chosen us and it's up to us to choose him. He says that we are chosen by God. To be holy people. Holy means set apart, sacred. He loves, he loves us unconditionally and there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And then he says that we must clothe ourselves. We've got to get dressed. We've got to be dressed to the nines from the inside out with him. We ought to be radiating what he is doing and changing in our lives, being thankful and grateful for all that he has done. He says, tenderhearted mercy. Uh, for, from the depths deep within you, offer pity and compassion to others. Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Kindness, that is our moral goodness and integrity. Integrity comes from the word integrate. And the opposite of integrate is disintegrate. When we lack integrity, we are disintegrating. And if there's anything that is needed in our world today in which we live, it is integrity, integrity, integrity. It needs to flow out of us as every single believer, whether we go to the grocery store or whether we're doing business elsewhere or we're dealing with each other, we must have integrity in all we say and in all we do next word is humility it's not humility is not weakness but but it's it's having a humble opinion of ourselves it's being modest it's placing others in front of ourselves gentleness mildness and meekness meekness is not weakness solomon said a gentle answer turns away wrath patience is the next word endurance and perseverance why do we need to do these things as Christ followers? And, and, and why should what, what, what's going on? Why should we do this? Well, the next verse says, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Think about how much God has forgiven you of. I go back to the unmerciful servant, and I think it's Luke 18, or maybe it's Matthew 18, how that this man owed so much to a certain king and couldn't repay, and he was forgiven of it, but he goes after somebody who owes him just a little bit and won't forgive him. In the parable, Jesus says, you're going to get treated worse because you wouldn't forgive. How can we do this? It sounds so difficult. Jesus is our example, and his servant Paul wrote these words in Romans chapter 15, verse 1. We who are strong must consider, be considered of those who are sensitive about things like this. We must not just please ourselves. We should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. For even Christ didn't live to please himself. As the scripture says, the insults of those who insult you, O oh God, have fallen on me. Such things were written in the scripture long ago to teach us. And the scripture gives us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. When it comes to construction, I think there's a couple of sides to construction. There is the building up and there's the tearing down. As Christ followers, I think we are called to be building up, not tearing down. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore be an encouragement to one another. Philippians 2.14 says, Do everything without arguing or complaining. But what do we like to do? We like to tear people down. Unfortunately, there has not been enough rebuilding, just a lot of tearing down. 
Each of us is a structure, and God's desire is to do a remodeling project within us. We have the opportunity to help him uh, um, do a remodeling project in somebody else, but we are to be building them up, not tearing them down. Jesus is the master carpenter. In Mark, some of the people saw Jesus, and they asked that question, isn't this the carpenter? In my lifetime, I've known a number of carpenters. And, and one thing that I've observed about many carpenters is their house is never finished. They've always got some remodeling project going on. Maybe it's a bathroom or it's a bedroom expansion, but they've got some kind of project going on. I've also been through, or I knew some people going through a remodeling project, and they can't wait for the carpenters to arrive and start, and they can't wait for them to finish and go away. Many times they will leave their home and go live somebody else, someplace else while the remodeling project is going on so that they will not be in the way of the project that's going on. But it also prevents them from saying, oh, what if we did this different? What if we did that different and end up costing them more money in the end? In any building project in most areas of the country, a carpenter must get a building permit before they begin. It is an uh, assurance process to make sure that the codes are followed and that the structure does not become uh, in a dangerous position. Are you allowing Jesus Christ to put the building permit up in your life? Are you willing to get out of the way so that the remodeling can take place? Jesus is the master carpenter and it is his desire to place the building permit up in your life so you can and you can trust him. It's going to be painful at times. We're going to have to get rid of some stuff that we don't need to be carrying, but he already has the finished product in his mind, what it's going to look like. And it's a lot better looking than what everybody else sees right now. You have been chosen. Now it's up to you to choose him and surrender to his remodeling project that he has created in love. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you again for supporting us. May God's blessing be upon you. We'll see you next time.